Resource overload is a big problem in medical school. There's a lot of really good resources out there, but there's also a lot of really smart people telling us to use different resources. Some people tell you to use Anki, some people tell you to use Boards and Beyond, some people tell you to stick to UFAPS or UWorld First Aid um, Pathoma. And how do you sort through all of this? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about a framework that I use in order to create a focus attack plan going by subject and going by stage of learning. Before I really dive into this, I just want to highlight the fact, um, give a disclaimer that I haven't even taken boards yet. I'm only a second year medical student, but this is something that I've used and I found helpful. So I think it could help some people out there. All right, so I'm just gonna dive right into this. I wanna compare three different topics. So the first is microbiology. And if you look here, this is a typical microbiology table. It's a lot of you know, rote memorization here, bacteria, disease, treatment. There's a lot of different bacteria for those of you who haven't taken micro yet. And yeah, things like sketchy micro help, but it's very, very micro uh, memorization heavy. You know, for example, like if you know one thing about um, Staph aureus, like protein A, or scalded skin syndrome, you could potentially get this question right, you know, knowing that, to know that it's Staph aureus. Now let's contrast that to anatomy. Now, here's a typical type of anatomical image. There's four different terminologies that are words that we've never used before medical student, uh, medical school, like palatine. What is palatine? You know, is that like a paladin? <laughs> um, but it's important not only to memorize these words, but you have to memorize their spatial orientation, their relationships to other things, um, as well as their functions. And then again, let's, let's contrast the last two, the microbiology and anatomy to physiology. Now this is a sinoatrial node action potential. And the typical kind of question that you would get on this would be, okay, you have a, a drug that inhibits phase three, right? What happens to this graph? And then they'll show you four different versions of this graph. And it's not really about memorization. It's about knowing these phases cold and then understanding a lot of different interconnected relationships and also maybe specific things about a certain drug like side effects. So three different topics, very different um, strategies to approach them. You can imagine for microbiology, you might wanna go faster into the memorization phase of learning and really just memorize stuff. Whereas um, for anatomy, you might wanna uh, memorize less off of just looking at tables, but looking at images instead, you know, going to something like, I love this website, by the way, um, <laughs> a little digression, but uh, yeah, you might wanna look at more pictures for anatomy and then for physiology. Um, in my personal experience, it actually doesn't help that much to do rote zonkey cards only. Um, not as much as it helps for micro. It really, really helps for um, physiology or pathophysiology to do question banks. Um, and that's my personal experience. So I created a topic, topic by topic framework in order to organize this. And yeah, it looks a little bit overwhelming at first, but it's pretty simple. Um, I'll, I'll just show you what I filled out for this framework. Um, as you can see, I go topic by topic. And these are like my actual recommendations. Again, take what I say with a grain of salt, but also feel free to use it if you'd like. Um, so I went through every, you know, most of these topics, and I figured out the resources that work best for me personally. Um, for example, just a personal anecdote, I actually started being one of the biggest believers in Zonkey. In, in my class. And I still think Zonkey is really quality, but after finishing anatomy, I realized something about myself that I'm a super visual learner. Like when there's some spatial orientation involved, when there's some funky image on the screen, I just, for some reason, my brain just loves that and it memorizes things really well like that. And um, when it came time to do organ systems, 
I knew I had to start using Sketchy Path. And I know, you know, there's some people out there who don't like Sketchy Path as much. I personally love it for the reason I, I said earlier. So I quickly switched off of Zonkey, and now I do Sketchy Path plus this sp specific Sketchy Path Anki deck. Um, that was my journey through understanding like my strengths and weaknesses. You're probably gonna have a different journey. Um, all of us come to medical school with different strengths and weaknesses. And that's something like I wanted to emphasize in this video. You know, what might work for somebody else who's recommending something to you may not actually work for you, right? Like, even if they come at you with the best intentions and even if they were super smart and had a really high step score, you might be somebody who is really visual or you might be somebody who benefits a lot from um, having well-worded Anki cards or you might be somebody who loves making one-page summaries of topics um, or makes paper flashcards. I, I know people who use each of those strategies and are very, very successful. So part of this journey of medical school is just figuring out what works for you. Um, so there you have it. That's basically the strategy going topic by topic by stage of learning, um, memorization and application. I hope that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna post this document online in the description section of this video. So if you want to use it, feel free to use it. And um, again, take these suggestions with a grain of salt. Um, but yeah, I think it can help, you know, really narrow in your attack plan and focus your strategy and hopefully save you, uh, save you from some of this mental overwhelm that you might experience. Um, the last thing I want to mention is, you know, specifically for people using Zonkey, you can still use this framework um, there's the original Zonkey post where he talks about the resources he used. And if you're using Zonkey, I would actually recommend going by these resources. So I'll post this up online too. All right, guys, thanks for listening and watching. And um, if you like this video, please, please leave a subscribe and a like. Um, <laughs> it helps to encourage me to make more videos. Uh, and if you have any questions, leave a comment below or feel free to hit me up with an email. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. Good luck.